everyone. I want to talk about two women soldiers. One is Frances Elizabeth Quinn, whose photographs you see here, and Ella V. Reno, who doesn't have any known photographs, at least any that have been discovered. After the war, their accounts became inextricably intertwined to the point where it created a garbled mess that persists to this day. I've seen information shared on websites, blogs, podcasts claiming that Reno and Quinn were the same woman using aliases when in fact they were two different women. And as I explained in my book Behind the Rifle, they had different backgrounds, they had different wartime experiences, they had different post-war lives because they were different women. And this video is going to serve as a supplement to my book where I'm going to show how the mistakes were made that led to the intertwining of their stories after the war. And I'm going to sort out uh, the details of their lives. So how do I know that Quinn and Reno were two different people? Well, an individual can't be in two different places at the same time. Uh, what you see here are excerpts from the 1870 census. The one at the top is for Frances Elizabeth Quinn. By 1870, she had married Matthew Angel, a fellow soldier. Um, Frances ended up in Ohio where she married Matthew Angel. And they had a family. Um, as you can see that Francis was born in Illinois. The bottom excerpt is also from the 1870 census. This is for Ella Reno. And by 1870, she had married Oliver Brenton from Indiana. Notice that Ella is from Pennsylvania. So how do I know that this is the correct Ella Reno, the soldier um, Ella Reno? Well, the bottom image is from a newspaper article from 1869. Um, Ella was living in Indianapolis at the time, working as a prostitute in the Buckeye Saloon. And she got mixed up in a police corruption scandal. She had been called to serve as a witness uh, during the investigation and the trial then. And the newspapers covered her as... Um, Frank Martin. She still used her male alias, the, the male alias of Frank Martin, after the war. So as you can see here, it says Mrs. Britton was known as Miss Frank Martin. So notice from the census, she was born in Pennsylvania. Um, they were actually living in Missouri in 1870. So this is after the, the police scandal incident. Um, so they're living in Missouri, and you can see that Oliver, Ella and Oliver had a son, Edward. So where was the mistake made and who made it? Um, I don't know who made the mistake or where exactly it originated from, but um, you can point to articles that were published after the war and, and see where the mistake came from. So the top is an excerpt from a book called The History of Woman Suffrage, Volume 2, 1887. It was published by um, Susan B. Anthony and other woman suffragists who were um, advocating for, of course, the right for women to vote. And they pointed to the exploits of women soldiers during the Civil War as illustrative of the fact that they could be productive citizens outside the home, therefore they deserve the right to vote. So they had um, this uh, newspaper clipping that they had included in their book. The title was Mustered Out. Frank Miller, the young lady soldier now at barracks number one, will be mustered out of service in accordance with the Army regulations which prohibit the enlistment of females in the army and sent to her parents in Pennsylvania. This will be sad news to Francis. Okay, so look at the newspaper clipping in the bottom left from the Hazington Dispatch, 1894. This is the exact same article that appeared in the book above. Um, it just notes that the article came from the Louisville Journal. 
uh, gave the following account um, under the title Mustard Out. Frank Miller, the young lady soldier now at barracks number one, will be mustered out of the Army service in accordance with the Army regulations which prohibit the enlistment of females in the Army and sent to her parents in Pennsylvania. This will be sad news to Francis. So both of these articles note that the male alias was Frank Miller and then use the name Francis. So the middle article is the actual Louisville Daily Journal article referenced it's from April 30th, 1863 and notice the names. This one says Frank Martin, the young lady soldier now at barracks number one, will be mustered out of service in accordance with the Army regulations which prohibits the enlistment of females in the Army and sent to her parents in Pennsylvania. This will be sad news to Frank. So at some point between 1863 when this original article came out and these post-war accounts, the name, the alias Frank Martin was changed to Frank Miller and Frank was changed to Francis. So I don't know why the mistake was made, who made the mistake, but um, it's obvious to see that there was indeed a mistake, probably because the aliases were so similar, Frank Miller and Frank Martin. But I'm going to go with the, the, new, the wartime newspaper article of 1863 as the correct one, noting it was Frank Martin um, that this was about. And this, of course, Frank Martin deals with um, Ella Reno. So you can see how their stories became intertwined with the similar aliases. And that is illustrative in the... Um, newspaper article on the right from the Burlington Hawkeye 1884 talks about Francis Hook alias Frank Miller. Francis Hook was another alias that Francis Elizabeth Quinn used. It is um, an alias that um, is associated with the, the, the many details of her story. And um, I wrote a blog post explaining how I discovered that Francis Hook was really Francis Elizabeth Quinn, and I'll link to it in the description below. So these are the art, the um, the regiments associated with her: the 65th Home Guards, which um, I believe it should have been the 67th. That was a mistake. The 90th Illinois is a, is a unit most commonly um, associated with her. But then the article goes on to throw in um, regiments that Ella Reno served in, the 2nd East Tennessee Cavalry, the 8th Michigan. Those are units that Reno served in, not Francis Elizabeth Quinn. Um, also, I have under uh, Murf I have Murfreesboro highlight, uh, underlined. Murfreesboro, of course, is also called the, the Battle of Stones River, supposedly where Ella Reno was uh, wounded, but I do not think that that was really the case and I'll get into that later on. So now that we know that Francis Elizabeth Quinn and Ella Reno were in fact two different people, let's talk about their characteristics. Um, if you remember from the 1870 census, they were approximately the same age. Quinn was listed as 26 and Reno was listed as 25. So what about their physical appearance? Uh, the top is, a, is an excerpt from a newspaper article um, after that came out after Quinn had been wounded. She encountered Dr. Mary E. Walker in a hospital in Chattanooga, and Dr. Walker describes her as about medium height with dark hazel eyes, dark brown hair, and rounded features. The bottom is a newspaper article describing El Arino, which mentions that she has auburn hair, whereas Quinn had dark brown hair. Reno has large blue eyes. Quinn is described as having hazel eyes. So what about the names that they use? Um, this is a newspaper article from 1909 that was the first account that I have been able to find so far that listed Frances Elizabeth, Elizabeth Quinn's true name. Um, she had been more commonly known um, as Frances Hook, that's the name associated with her um, 
and newspaper articles that came out from all over the country after she had been discovered after her after she'd been wounded and captured um but this is the first newspaper article that i found that listed her true name francis elizabeth quinn and gives her male alias that she served under as frank miller and of course this newspaper article talks about the fact that she had married um, matthew angel so it ties all that together Eliza Miller was another name that she used. This is a newspaper article from October of 1862. So Eliza, of course, is from her, her name, Elizabeth. Uh, Miller was a, a common name associated with her. I'm not sure where Miller comes from. Perhaps it was her mother's maiden name. I just don't know right now. Um, and you see I have highlighted the Iris Legion, which was a name associated with the 90th Illinois Infantry that she served in. Um, this is um, part of a letter that was published in a, a newspaper that came out in April of 1863. It's written by an Illinois soldier who encountered her in Tennessee, and he gives her name as Frances Miller. So again, we see Miller here and obviously at the 90th Illinois Infantry is highlighted that she served in and as I mentioned a while ago um, Francis Hook is the name that is most commonly associated with her in newspaper articles that came out from all over the country so you can see that um, Frank Miller of course was the male alias so that is consistent and that she served in the 90th Illinois Infantry uh, Martha A. Baker was a nurse who also encountered Frances Hook, Frances Elizabeth Quinn, um, during the war. And this account came out many years after the war, and she notes that the alias was Harry Miller instead of Frank Miller. So I think maybe this was the result of a faulty memory, um, given the fact that this came out years after the war. Also notice that Baker mentions another woman soldier called Anna. I don't know who that is, and we may never know who that who that woman soldier was, unfortunately. Frank Henderson is another um, male alias associated with Frances Elizabeth Quinn, but I want to point out that this alias was likely the result of a newspaper writer affording her privacy because as you can see um, with the portion that I have underlined it says whom we will call Frank Henderson so this tells me that this alias was assigned by the newspaper writer rather than Quinn utilizing this herself but again Frank Miller is the name that we know that she used and that the army recognized this is uh, part of her hospital records where um, you can see frank miller served in company g of the 90th illinois infantry and i have highlighted female soldiers so the army recognized the fact that she was a female soldier um, these two records are from her marriage record and um, her marriage to, to Matthew Angel and a, uh, a record of, a, of the birth of, of one of her daughters. Um, so as you can see here, it's her name is listed as Frances E. Stewart and the bottom Fanny Stannard. So Fanny, of course, is just a, a nickname for Frances. Um, so Standard and Stewart's probably just a mistake one for the other. Um, I had a, a relative of one of her daughters contact me recently and state that Stewart was yet another alias that she assumed and she did that to protect to protect her children. Okay, so what about Ellerino? This is um, Provost Marshall record noting her name Miss Ella V. Reno, female soldier, and that her male alias was Frank Martin. This is a newspaper article that came out in February or March of 1863 um, discussing 
Ella Reno, whose name given is actually Ella V. Hughes, um, and that her husband was formerly of Cincinnati. So um, I don't know if this is a legitimate name, if she, if she had married a man whose last name was Hughes, or whether this was an alias that she used. But um, this also includes another woman soldier, Sarah Elizabeth Bradbury, who Ella had served with. And I believe that the newspaper article mixed up these aliases because this one assigns Frank Morton to Bradbury and John Williams to Hughes. And I discuss all of this in my book and, and why I believe that um, these aliases were mixed up. And I believe that Frank Morton should be the alias for Ella Reno uh, mentioned here is Ella Hughes. And that it's actually supposed to be Frank Martin. Um, there was another soldier who wrote about Ella Reno and also used her male alias as Frank Morton. So this is yet another alias that Ella Reno used. This is uh, from the letter that she wrote to President Abraham Lincoln in May of 1863. And she signed it, Your Humble Servant, Miss Ellie B. Reno. So this is um, one of the mistakes that I've seen. Um, the, the portion that I just put up on the screen is from the Wikipedia article. So use that with always use it as a grain of salt. Make sure to, to double and triple check your sources. Um, just be very careful when using, um, using any source, especially Wikipedia. But whoever typed up this article, typed up part of the letter, and then signed it as Ellie B. Reno, which is the name that she signed it under, but then put in parentheses Francis Quinn, implying that Ella Reno, Ellie B. Reno, is the same person as Francis Quinn, and we know now that that is not the case. They are two different people. So let's talk about their education and their wartime correspondences. As far as Frances Elizabeth Quinn, alias Frank Miller, she allegedly wrote a letter to her brother, so she was at least literate enough to do, to do that. Um, her brother was Thomas Quinn Jr., and she claimed that he was killed during the war. Most accounts say Shiloh. I found at least one account that said Tunnel Hill, but it doesn't matter because he wasn't killed during the war at all. Uh, he actually survived. This was probably a way for Quinn to garner sympathy in the press by claiming that her only brother was, was killed when, in fact, he was not. He didn't even list until 1864, and that was in the 52nd Illinois Infantry when he was about uh, 16, 17, 18 years old. Um, and he was little too. He's listed as five foot three, but again, you know, he's, he's younger. So, and he was apparently displeased with his sister's decision to join. And that elicited a saucy reply from Francis. And in a letter that was supposedly in possession of Francis, one of Francis's daughter, Maggie, um, she said, I wish to say in reply to your recent letter that I volunteer in the army because I wish to have a part in the defense of my country's flag. So whether this letter existed or if it did, whether it survived, I do not know. I hope it did and I hope that um, it will be discovered at some point. But as far as Thomas goes, he must have got over whatever issue he had with with his sister joining the army because um, he dedicated a panel of uh, his grave marker to her apparently he had a child francis e quinn who he obviously named after his sister and on that panel of the grave marker he has a relief of a civil war soldier so i discussed this in a blog post and i'll link to it in the description below so what about Ella Reno, alias Frank Martin? She did have formal education. Says that she was sent to the convent in Wheeling. This says Virginia. Of course, that's what it was at the time. 
Uh, Wheeling, of course, became um, a part of West Virginia after West Virginia left uh, Virginia. But she was educated in this convent at the age of 12 years. So she did have formal education. And we know that she wrote to President Abraham Lincoln that I mentioned earlier. So this is a copy of the three-page letter to him, just asking him to allow her to remain in the Army. She's very patriotic, but she had been discovered, and she wanted to stay and serve her country. Um, she also mentioned that her father was serving on a gunboat. And again, you see the signature over on the right-hand side. Your humble servant, Miss Ellie B. Reno, not Francis Quinn. So let's talk about where they lived. As far as Frances Elizabeth Quinn, there are only two states associated with her. Illinois, which is where she was born, and then Ohio, where she moved to after the war, raised her family, and where she ultimately died and is buried. As far as Ella Reno, alias Frank Martin, this newspaper article says that she was born near Bristol, Pennsylvania. Of course, she was educated in the convent in Wheeling, um, West Virginia. We know that she also lived in Missouri, according to the 1870 census, and she also lived in Indiana. But this newspaper article from March 1863 seems to insinuate there was some type of Cincinnati connection as well that... Um, says Miss Ella resides residing in Cincinnati, Ohio, and recall earlier the newspaper article mentioning her name as Ella V. Hughes and that her husband was from Cincinnati. Again, I don't know if there was a husband. Uh, perhaps um, she made it up just to garner sympathy in the press um, and that Ella Hughes was just another name but apparently there seems to be some sort of Ohio connection Cincinnati Ohio specifically let's talk about the units that Quinn and Reno served in and their wartime experiences as far as Francis Elizabeth Quinn alias Frank Miller there are several Illinois units associated with her um, these newspaper articles mention the 11th, the 33rd, and the 19th Illinois specifically. Uh, I'm not sure where the 11th Illinois comes from. I've not been able to find any um, substantial uh, documentation that, that states she ever served in that unit. As far as the 33rd Illinois, um, there was a sergeant who served in that unit, and he claimed that she never served in that one um, either. The 19th Illinois, I think that that was a mistake for the 90th Illinois. It's easy to see how that mistake could be made. Um, the 90th Illinois, of course, we know that she served in because of her hospital records. Um, the 65th Illinois is another unit associated with her. Um, I think this is a, six, a mistake for the 67th Illinois. Um, she was from Bureau County and eventually moved to Chicago where I believe that she joined the 67th Illinois type of a home guard um, unit and I think that she was discovered there and eventually ended up in the 90th Illinois Infantry as uh, Frank Miller and of course you see Francis Hook which was another alias that we've talked about before that she used after she was wounded and discovered. Uh, the bottom document is from correspondence um, between her daughter Maggie Dixon and the War Department. Uh, Maggie wrote them in uh, between 1909 and 1912 asking for uh, documentation of her mother's service. Apparently um, her mother's story was passed down in the family and Maggie wanted to to know more about her mother as well as try to obtain uh, back pay for her mother's service but she Maggie is not sure exactly what units um, her mother served in so she's trying to find out she mentions the 19th Illinois um, 
she mentions the 15th Illinois and later on she she writes back and writes um, or asks about the 15th Indiana uh, there was a soldier named B.F. Miller in the 15th Indiana but um, I was able to obtain his service records and show that B.F. Miller was actually um, a male but Dixon also of course mentions the 65th Illinois so again this I think was a mistake for the 67th Illinois which really was a home guard type unit so um, a couple of more newspaper articles um, mentions that Francis E. Hook uh, alias Frank Miller um, some of the units that she supposedly served in and um, the 11th, the 65th, 33rd, and <clears throat> 90th. Illinois, again, the 90th is the only one that we know that she served in. And again, I'm, I'm, I think the 67th as well. But um, this account also mentions her husband, Jerry Kane, O'Kane, which was actually Jerry Kane enlisted in Company G of the 90th Illinois Infantry, had previously served in the 67th, so which is where I think that um, they met and she was discovered but allowed to accompany the 90th Illinois South with Jerry. Um, this article mentions that she participated in the skirmish at Coldwater, Mississippi in December of 62 right after um, the raid uh, by Van Dorn on the supply base at Holly Springs. Um, this article also mentions that she was involved in the Siege of Jackson in July of 1863, which happened uh, right after Vicksburg fell. And interestingly enough, um, this article mentions that she was with the 97th Indiana. So it's interesting that there is some, tor some type of Indiana connection as far as the unit served. I, I've not been able to substantiate uh, the 97th Illinois um, connection and there's also a mention that she was with the pioneers so this is another account um, Illinois soldier with the 14th uh, wrote a letter that was printed in a Memphis newspaper in I believe it was March of 1863 and he also mentions that she participated in um, the skirmish at Coldwater so um, after um, leaving Mississippi, the 90th Illinois ended up in um, Florence, Alabama, where uh, Frances was uh, foraging and she was captured by the Confederates and she was shot trying to escape. Um, she was taken to um, Atlanta, imprisoned in Atlanta and then exchange at Graysville, Georgia in February of 1864 um, and ultimately sent, spent a good amount of time between hospitals in Chattanooga and Nashville where her photographs were made where she re recuperated and eventually ended up in Ohio. So Ella Reno alias Frank Martin, she served in the 2nd East Tennessee Cavalry um, as a civilian teamster, she was hired uh, by the quartermaster department in uh, Louisville um, in 1862 um, as a teamster and became attached to the 2nd East Tennessee Cavalry. So she wasn't a formally enlisted soldier, but she was attached to the unit as a civilian uh, teamster hired by the quartermaster. So with the 2nd East Tennessee Cavalry, uh, she journeyed south and ended up uh, involved with the fight at Murfreesboro, which you can you can see here again, also known as the Battle of Stones River, fought at the the end of 1862, very beginning of 1863. This article claims that she was wounded in the shoulder and discharge and she eventually ended up in the 8th Michigan Infantry um, where she en she encountered encountered at Bowling Green Kentucky 
But um, Philip Sheridan also mentions her in his memoirs that um, he talks about uh, two women who were discovered after they drunkenly fell into Stones River. Um, this would have been about February, March of 1863. He refers to her as a as an East Tennessee um, woman. But she and Sarah Bradbury uh, fell into Stones River while they were drunk. And in the process of resuscitation, their sex was disclosed, according to Sheridan. And at the end, he said that they were both forwarded to Army headquarters and then sent to Nashville and then beyond our lines to Louisville. So I don't think that Reno was ever shot in the shoulder at Murfreesboro. Um, it was um, it was a ploy again to just to, to garner sympathy in the press so she was actually discovered because she was drunk and so it just it sounded more patriotic more romantic just to say that she was wounded in the shoulder so um, but either way she ended up in Nashville and then eventually to Louisville and these two articles talk about her her stay there. Frank Martin is now at barracks number one and of course notes that she will be sent home to her parents in Pennsylvania and the bottom apparently she was supposed to be getting married to a gallant captain while in Louisville. I don't know if that ever happened. I have not been able to determine find any information um, whether that was true or not. And it was while she was here in uh, Louisville where she wrote the letter to President Lincoln asking to be allowed to remain in the Army instead of being discharged. So after Louisville, the Army sent Ella Reno, alias Frank Martin, to Cincinnati, Ohio. And it was there that she claimed that she was a niece of General Jesse Reno, who had been killed at the Battle of South Mountain in 1862. But um, his genealogy is, is fairly well documented, and there is no evidence that Ella was, was a relative unless she just slipped through somehow. But it's doubtful that she was. Um, uh, they were raising funds for the general's family in Cincinnati and perhaps it was just a way for her to get in on that by claiming that she was his niece. You would certainly think that if she was indeed his niece that she would have used that to gain clout with President Lincoln whenever she wrote him uh, the letter in May of 1863 while she was in Louisville. Um, in in her um, attempt to sway President Lincoln to allow her to remain in the army, but uh, she did not claim to be the general's niece. Instead, she said that her her father was a gunboat captain. So it is highly doubtful that she was actually a niece of General uh, Jesse Reno. Again, we're talking about Ella Reno, not Frances Elizabeth Quinn. So after Cincinnati, lose track of her, uh, but she actually ends up back in Nashville in November of 1864. Uh, she's arrested once again in uniform along with another woman soldier. And she is once again sent to Louisville in uh, late 1864. Um, after the war, 1869, I mentioned before about how she uh, got caught up in the police corruption scandal in Indianapolis where she was called to serve as a witness and during this time of course newspapers are sharing her story and now in 1869 in Indianapolis she's claiming to be related to uh, the members of the the Reno gang who are credited with um, the first train robbery um so i can i can believe that she was related to these guys instead of um the general 
So what happened to them? Um, Ella Reno ended up divorcing Oliver. Actually, he divorced her, Oliver Brenton, um, in 1874 and lose track of her. Don't know what happened to her. She may have gone back to Pennsylvania. Don't know what happened to their son. Um, Frances Elizabeth Quinn um, married Matthew Angel, had a family, and uh, she died in Ohio in 1872 at the age of 27, and her grave uh, location is is unknown. I hope that you found this video useful and that I've cleared up the myths, misconceptions, and mistakes surrounding the accounts of Frances Elizabeth Quinn and Ella Reno. You can read more in my book Behind the Rifle or you'll find the documentation that I used in the endnote section. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me at this email address.